Hello and welcome back to some brand new episodes of Kyle Engineers. Today we're going to be looking at suspension geometry. This is a very requested subject. Now specifically we're going to be looking at caster, camber, kingpin inclination angle and scrub radius. Now these are all different concepts so I'm going to split them up into four different videos. I'd just like to say that the website MotoIQ Com has some really good reads on this handling stuff. You should definitely go and check that out after here. I didn't steal all my material from there, if that's what you're asking. I do actually have a lot of experience in this area, but I really recommend it for a good solid read. Today's lesson is going to be on camber. Now camber is probably the simplest one to explain here geometrically of all my different parameters. And it's really simple. When the car is going along, the tire will be canted at some angle. So if the car's over here, the tire will be canted either in neutral or out. And this is basically the camber. It's the number of degrees off axis it is. So zero degrees camber would be if the tire was straight up and down like that. So car over here, suspension going there, up dead upright would be neutral camber, zero degrees. Going outwards is considered positive camber and going inwards is considered negative camber. Now the question is why do we need camber? If we consider the example of just a straight up and down tire. We've got a wheel in the center, in the middle of it, and that's our tire there. Now, if we corner, apply a lateral force to it, okay? The force is going there. This tire wall is going to deform. Now, because of the rate of deforming, it will go in down here, and then it will curve up here. And you'll end up with this part of the contact patch actually being pulled up. So you end up with the contact patch getting shaped kind of like that. And as a result, your actual contact patch size decreases. Now, if you watch my video on the physics of tires, you'll know that contact patch size should be as large as possible to get the maximal amount of grip, generally. So we can see that we don't want this bit coming up like that. So how can we get it to stay down? We can't the tire into a corner. It's the same way like a motorbike leans into a corner. If you have your tire canted in, it's going to sit flatter. The contact patch here, if we consider our case of negative camber, it's going to deform down to nice and flat and we'll get good contact with the ground there. Now, you may ask the question, what's happening to the tire on the other side of the car, which is going to be cambered out the other way and therefore going to be gripping less? Well, this is a twofold thing and it's really due to the weight transfer. So we're getting all our weight of our car, our CG of our car will be up here. And so as we turn the corner, we've got a force on the center of gravity and it's going to add extra weight down on this tire. There's going to be weight pulled off the other tire. So we know that we're getting the majority of our lateral force or grip from this tire. So it's more important that we're optimizing the outside tire than the inside tire. In addition to this, the outside tire is going to deform less because there's less load on it. So you're not going to, it's not going to be as bad. And of course the contact patch requirement isn't going to be as severe. So that's why we get away with running camber on both tires facing that way, negative camber, instead of trying to get them to both lean into the corner. Obviously, ideally you get them to both lean into a corner and that's kind of where caster can come in and help you a bit there. So we'll talk about that in the other video. Now, obviously there's problems with camber too. If you have too much camber, that is the tire is too angled over. This is too much camber here. This is a very dramatic level of camber that I've drawn. I've just drawn it for exaggeration. What happens is, is that the tire will deform, but it will still end up on this edge here. It won't get down enough. So you'll end up with the contact patch coming up like that. Now, what that means is you're running at a suboptimal contact patch area and you're just not getting the grip you want because you've overdone the camber. So you've got to adjust the camber to the correct amount, not just the most you can wind on. And that's why when you see those really stupidly lowered cars with heaps of camber, you know they're not going to handle well. Now the other problem is, is that when you're in a straight line, you've only got a small amount of contact patch compared to if you were running zero camber, where you've got this massive contact patch here. So the result of that is, is that you're going to have less straight line traction in both acceleration and in braking. So that's just something that you've got to consider. It's a compromise. Where do you draw the line? Do you want the best straight line performance or do you want the best cornering performance? The final disadvantage of running negative camber is that 
if you have your tire angled like this, it kind of acts like a motorbike and you end up with something called camber thrust. Now, this is fine when you're going in a straight line because what happens is the two tires will try to force inside of the car. But because you've got two tires, they'll balance each other out. The problem is if one of those tires gets over a bump or gets airborne or loses traction or something, the camber thrust is gonna cause the car to dart to the side a little bit, even though it's not in a corner. So it will make the car feel a little bit more twitchy than if you were running no camber at all. This is why generally road cars don't run negative camber to a notable extent, because A, the tire wear would be horrific because of the smaller contact patch, and B, you end up with the camber thrust which will upset most average drivers. But for race cars, negative camber is almost certainly a must. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Uh, if you liked it, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and check out the other videos in this little mini-series. And hopefully, see you next time.